With a new security agreement and further military aid, Great Britain is expanding its support for Ukraine, which is still attacked by Russia. And during a visit to Kiev, British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak called on the West to continue to stand firmly with Ukraine. He announced that aid to Ukraine would be increased to two and a half billion pounds. And at the same time, a new security agreement was agreed, which, in the words of Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, is unprecedented. If Kremlin boss Vladimir Putin wins in Ukraine, he will not stop there. That's what Sunak said at a press conference with Zelensky. Our adversaries around the world believe we have neither the patience nor the resources for long wars. So if we hesitate now, we are emboldening not only Putin, but also his allies in North Korea, Iran and elsewhere. That's what the British leader said. At their meeting in Kiev, Sunak and Zelensky announced a new 10-year bilateral security agreement. The agreement goes back to a declaration by the G7 states at their meeting in Vilnius last July, in which Ukraine was promised long-term security commitments from the individual states. And as I said, Zelensky spoke of an unprecedented agreement with London. It's not just a simple explanation. Today marks a turning point in European history, emphasized the U Ukrainian president. Great Britain is one of Ukraine's most important military allies in the fight against Russia's war of aggression. And during his visit to Kiev, Sunak promised Ukraine an increase in military aid for the 2024-25 financial years to these two and a half billion pounds. And this represents an increase of 200 million pounds compared to the previous two years. The additional funds will be used for, among other things, long-range missiles, air defense, artillery ammunition and maritime security. And according to the information, at least 200 million pounds are earmarked for the rapid procurement and production of thousands of military drones for Ukraine. The new aid package increases British support for Ukraine to a total of almost 12 billion pounds. And Putin may think he can last longer than us, but he is wrong, is what Sunak said. Almost two years after the Russian invasion, Ukraine fears that Western support may be waning. And there is now disagreement in many countries about the extent of further aid to Ukraine. And Zelensky warned on Thursday that any pauses in Ukraine's defense would help Moscow rearm and overrun them. Zelensky is expected uh, to have more Western allies coming, like the, the, the Spanish Foreign Minister Stefan Sejourné um, was there already on Friday, I guess, and there, there he wanted to ensure the Ukrainian president of continued French support as well, as it uh, was said. Um, and Sejourné is a close confidant of President Emmanuel Macron. Um, he was unexpectedly appointed as the new chief diplomat during a government reshuffle in France. And uh, France has recently come under criticism because French support for Ukraine is, for example, less than German support. And Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's diplomatic missions in the Baltic and at home in Kiev currently have just one main goal, to compensate for the loss of support from the USA. From Washington last week's Thursday, John Kirby, the spokesman for the U.S. government, once again announced what everyone already knew and feared. The aid we are providing has now come to a standstill. The planned aid package in the forms of arms deliveries and other support for Kiev expired at the end of last year. Another could certainly be provided by the USA, but approval is currently pending in the U.S. Congress, where parts of the Republicans are trying to implement their own domestic political goals with their blockade of this aid. And this means that the Ukrainians have lost their largest supporter, at least temporarily, which means that ammunition for important weapon systems, such as the HIMARS rocket launchers or the Patriot anti-aircraft defense system, could become even more scarce, scarce is it, than it already is. And the Russian army will likely feel emboldened to launch new attacks by the lack of supplies from the United States. Some experts fear that Russian forces could attempt a renewed attack on the city of Charkiv. 
At least Russia appears to be massing troops in that region. It is no coincidence that the British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak traveled to the Ukrainian capital on that Friday to sign an agreement on the security cooperation and, of course, to signal above all that Kiev is not alone, even if the Americans are busy with themselves. And Sunak had already promised the support worth the equivalent of those two and a half billion for this year and the next. But in the days before, Zelensky visited the Baltics and he didn't have to ask for help there. Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania are, relatively speaking, among Ukraine's biggest supporters and also because the countries fear that in the event of a Russian victory in Ukraine, they will be the next to be targeted by the Kremlin. And Zelensky's visit to the Baltics should therefore be understood above all as a reaffirmation of mutual solidarity. And of course, Kiev was also promised continued support in the form of arms deliveries and Ukrainian soldiers are also to be trained in Latvia. And uh, a new tone was almost casually set by Estonian President Alakaris, who announced that there should be no restriction on the use of weapons supplied to Ukraine. Until now, many of the Western allies had linked their deliveries to the condition that the weapons would only be used for defense within Ukraine and not, for example, against targets in Russia. Something may be changing here in the attitude of some of Kiev's allies. Legally, Ukrainian attacks on military targets in Russia would be legitimate as defensive measures. In the past, airfields and the capital Moscow have repeatedly been attacked with drones. Kiev has never officially claimed responsibility for the attacks. Militarily, it would make a lot of sense for Ukraine to attack missile launch pads in Russia, for example, instead of having to individually intercept every missile that is launched from there towards Ukraine. However, this could prove to be an additional hurdle in the USA for resuming military aid. And if you want to know more about Brexit or UK politics, the next video is right here on the end screen. I'll see you there. I'll be back.